Hello. There's a specific thing about the Lisa Ann Froon and the Chris Kremers case that I would like to discuss. Just a specific thing. Now, the theory goes, and this is backed by the cell phone that they, the cell phones that they found in, in the bag. Now, I'm going with things that both sides agree with here. I'm not going with wild theories and then theories that things that have been like, you know, like that bag. It was first thought that the bag was like in pristine condition. Well, now we found out that the bag's not really in pristine condition. So, you know, what's the case? You know, there's, you know, the, the dog blew. You know, did it go with them? Did it not? Did it belong to the hostel, the, the, the home, or did it belong to the restaurant? There's, I'm not going to deal with that type of stuff. I'm not going to deal with the Photoshop type of stuff either. Just stuff that both sides can agree on. According to the phones that were found, both sides can agree. Now, if I get the numbers a little mixed up, I might be off a little bit, but I'm pretty close. On day one, now, I think it was about 5 o'clock Panama time in the afternoon, about 4 or 5 o'clock, about an hour or two after the last picture that we know was taken before the, the crazy pictures in the darkness, one call was made by each phone. Okay, one phone call was made by each phone. One girl had an Android, one girl, one woman had an Android, one woman had an iPhone. They both called 122, one, one, two, I think that's the number, the, the Dutch version of 911. They both tried at one time, they didn't connect, so they put their phones back in their bag or the pocket or wherever they were keeping their phones, and they didn't try it, try calling emergency help until the next day. Now the next day, if I, if I kept track right, both girls used their phone, both women, they tried calling the emergency numbers twice, two times each. Then the next day, there was um, three calls made each. So first day, each girl tries once. Second day, each girl tries twice. Then the third day, each each woman tries once, once. I mean, I mean, two or three times. If you're lost in an unknown area, and that first whole day, you only try, you, you only try to call the authorities. You you only try to call emergency help for once, even if there's no bars on your phone. You know how many times I've actually made a phone call and. It, no bars were shown at that instance, but I kept trying. And you know what? Eventually, the phone did go through. You no, know, I I've never been lost in the Panama jungle, okay, or Panama Trail. Saying it was a jungle is it, it, not really that accurate. I've never been lost in their specific situation, but I have been lost before, and you know I I have been a little spooked by something and and and, and called. Or sometimes I've had to get a hold of somebody. You know, I even if there's no signal, you know, I, I'll call 10, 15, 20 times sometimes. And you know what? Sometimes if the initial calls don't work, you do. And one of the girls, one of the women, I'm sorry I keep on saying girls. They, they're not, they're, they're women. One of the women actually did get a hold of 911 for like a second or two. So if you had that success, wouldn't you keep trying? If I'm like out in the wilderness and day one, I, I, I can't get a hold of anyone and I'm lost. Day two, I can't get a hold of anyone I'm lost. And day three, I can't get a hold of anyone. But then, hey, for a second, I get 911. Well, guess what I'm doing? I'm going to spend the next hour trying to get 911 at the same spot where I was, where I got them for one or two seconds. If you got them, them for one or two seconds, and all the other times you didn't get them at all, don't you think, don't you think you would keep on trying? I mean, if you were lost the initial day, you would have tried more than that. It's crazy how few times these women actually tried to call them 911 or 122, the, the Dutch emergency number. Seriously, I mean, with or without signal. Now, if you're listening to me and you use cell phones and, and, and you live in areas that are 
you know, the, the coverage kind of stinks. You know what I'm saying? Well, sometimes the flow might go through. It might go through. Now, these women, you know, maybe they lived in, you know, where they lived. They're used to always having a signal. So then when they didn't get a signal, they automatically thought, well, you know, nowhere close around here will be able to call. When you're desperate, you keep on calling. Now, I would have been, I wouldn't have surprised, been surprised if the girls would have tried 100 times on that first day to call 911. I wouldn't have been surprised on that second day that they called 911. But they really were lost. But they were lost, not abducted, but they were lost and they had free access to their phone on the first three days. They would have called their emergency numbers much more. You're not, and, and, and the counterpoint will be, well, they were trying to conserve their phone. You're, you're not thinking about that back then, at that point. And what good is a conserved phone if you're not using it? I mean, it, it just doesn't make much sense. I mean, they, 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 they look up a Google Maps thing, but they, But, but they're afraid of like calling people on their phone? Uh, no, it, that just doesn't make sense to me. That is a, a big red flag right there. People that are lost that have their phones and they're in desperate shape, they will call, especially on that second day. That second day, they would have called. Now, if someone just, if they called it, you know, the, on a regimented time, and it seems like they called about the same time every day. That kind of, to me, that's, you know, that doesn't tell me that Lisa, that Lisa Ann and Chris Kremers are necessarily making those phone calls. To me, I think about the possibility that, well, someone has their phone and they're calling when they have a break. They're calling when they're able to. You see, when you have a regimented schedule and you work and then you have a break at this certain time, then you call or you can make it to like a, a, a or th that call that lasted one or two seconds and then it was dropped. What if it was someone who had committed a crime and they had the phone and they were just thinking, well, I'm out of the area and I'm just using this to try to set up to keep, to have this loss scenario. What if they were actually calling, not expecting to get anybody, but then they did get 911, someone did answer, and they were like, whoa, you know, we were expecting this not to go through. We're, we better close this up right now. No one's, I, I haven't even heard that talked about. Anyway, th these phone records are fishy, my friends. Very fishy. I believe someone that's lost, the average person, would call a lot more than a couple times each day. Thank you very much.